Now what I'm going to do is do a little bit of playing around with these coils. Um, the ones that early on I did are drier and they're not going to bend as easily as the other ones. And so um, the ones I know I'm going to bend a lot, I'm going to do the, the freshest ones. Now when you do this, if you notice it starts to crack on you, have your water handy. Just put a little bit on there as it goes around. If it cracks completely, you're not going to be able to do this. Look at that. I've got this nice little coil going on here, going around and around in a spiral. So what we're going to do is we're going to try out a variety of different things. So spiral is definitely one of them. I'm going to do one that goes back and forth like this. Got one there. I have ones that I could fold just on top of itself like this. All right, so let's try some other things. I'm going to try making a spiral that has more of corners to it. So let's call it a square spiral. Try to get started. Square spiral. I could try a spiral that starts one way. Again, it's just a crack when you do the large bends like that. Add a touch of water to the areas that it's starting to break. Do my spiral going that way, and then maybe a spiral on the other side going the other way. Again, it's starting to really crack. Some water involved here. And roll it around. So it's kind of like an S-shaped spiral. All right. One thing we can do with these pieces, I could try to actually like make like points on them like this, which kind of like I'm making a letter A. Um, I could go along and have them be pointy, so a zigzag, so to speak. You could make letters as well. Such water. So I just keep water handy. I can just dip into whenever I need a little bit. So I got another one with points, a little zigzag with points. All right, so if I want to turn it into a circle, I'm going to use a smaller one here. Bring it around. And whenever you're doing these hard bends is where you might need a little bit of water on the part that you're really forcing to go. <clears throat> so it looks good. Now I'm going to score. <clears throat> right now I have some soft clay. And I can use my card for this if I wanted. Or your little comb tool. Or your brother's comb. The same one that you took the t-shirt from earlier. He's already mad at you, so you may as well just go ahead and go all out with it. All right, now I have some circles like this. I could do the same thing with squares, triangles, different shapes like that. Another thing I could use as a building block would be to have small circles. In other words, a cross section of my coil. So if I try to cut these out. Now, in cutting them out, you may mess up the curl, the curve a little bit. They might get a little bit smushed so I can roll them back out again. So I could work with these little, they look like little mini marshmallows. Um, so these are building blocks. Now some of them I did a little too thin so I don't want to use that. I want to go about as thick as the coil is. So alright, so I have a bunch of things to work with here. And let's see what I can do. For the next step, you need a bowl. A paper bowl is perfect. Any other bowl needs to be lined with a wet paper towel or napkin. This keeps the clay from getting stuck to the bowl. Okay, so I'm going to work with this bowl that's going to help me keep it form as I make a visible coil bowl. And so I'm going to start, I feel like starting mine with just like large spiral to get it going. You decide what you want it to be. Now we're going to be doing some smoothing on the inside of these that joins them together. And so it's, I would recommend sticking them together with some slip like this if you're doing that. But right now it's okay if I don't add a bunch of slip to join these together. We're just going to let this be loose. Um, as long as fairly soon I get around to smoothing them out from the inside, it'll be okay. So I'm going to lay this in here somewhere where I feel good about placement and then go from there. Now if I wanted to keep going, then go ahead and just keep it wrapping around. If I want it to be more of a consistent 
coil though, I don't like the fact that it's two separate pieces, that would be a place that I would want to join them together correctly. It comes down to um, you're going to be seeing how these look on the outside, so I want to make sure that they join together really nice on the outside. And so they'll just slip. And there we go. So I'm basically just making an extra long coil. Smooth them together, make that line disappear. If it's not joining together very well, smooth them together even more. You don't want it falling right apart. There we go. Looking good. And so I'm going to go ahead and just bring this around and around and around and around until I'm out of coil. All right. So now at this point, I'm going to try a variety of different shapes. Um, I might use a little zigzaggy one. I'm going to connect it to the other one that I have going on there. And I'm going to go ahead and just try something different here. I'm going to do this little free form where I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. I'm building experimentally. I don't like how that's really cracked. So I am going to add a little bit of slip down and rub that in because the crackiness is going to be hard to deal with. So, all right, there we go. So I'm going to join them together again. And once I have these, this in here, I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to use the bowl, the wall of the bowl, to help me get this to work out. Okay, so basically I just went up the wall. Now, this is where I want to think about this as a 360 degree space. I could think if I want to have some symmetry going on, maybe I want to have another one of those zigzag ones over here, or maybe every quadrant. It's really up to you. If you say, ah, I'll just see what happens, that's fine too. I'm going to go ahead and try some other things, like maybe I'm going to try the circle, but before I do the circle, like what would happen if I put, can I put anything in here? Uh, if I put this in here, it's a little bit on the too large side, so I think I might do, take a little piece of clay and smoosh it and make a little sphere, a little ball. And once I have this little ball shape, that would be would would fit in there even better. Okay, so I have that. That's gonna work. So um, put this here. All right. So this is where you're really deciding if you're gonna be following a sort of pattern that goes around, or if this is just gonna be very loose. Uh, maybe I want to see what this looks like. Hey, if you do this and you don't like the end product, you know how to do it. You go ahead and do a second one and go after the things that you're hoping you would have done the first time around. So I'm trying this. It's like double rainbow. Double rainbow. Oh my God. It's a double rainbow all the way. All right. And maybe I. Whoa, that's so intense. I do want to keep going with that idea of like a, a sphere, a little ball shape that is wrapped around by a circle. All right, there's a nice sphere. And wrap around it with one of these other ones. Looks good. So you don't need to join these together because we want the outside to be open like that, that you can see the line really clearly. And if I add a bunch of slip in there, I'm going to lose that. So I'm purposefully only slipping an area where I want them to join together completely, right there where I join the pieces of the circle together. All right. All right, so I am going with a little bit of a pattern here. I'm going to do some sort of wiggly line. Then I'm going to do a circle inside of a circle. And then I'm going to do a different kind of a wiggly line, a circle inside of a circle. So I think what I'm finding out for me is I like that idea of variety at the same time as I have some sort of a kind of a consistent thing too. So I'm going to try out this spiral and see if that looks any good. I don't really like that that much. And so change it up. Maybe I'm going to use this one instead. Uh, and, and that's great except for, wow, it's far too long. And so i got to decide how do I want to handle this. And so... If I were to do some cutting, maybe I cut this one, and I'm going to have this one here, and then maybe I'm going to have the other way 
um, perhaps like that. So, all right. Now, I have it it's irregular there. They don't line up, and so I'm going to have that throughout the whole thing. It's very irregular, so I'm going to come in at the end and see what I can do about making them kind of join together and smooth out at the end. So, I'm going to keep on going. So, what's next? If you answered circle inside of a circle, you're right! It's actually working out pretty good. Should be able to put one more here. So I'm gonna do that one first. I don't think I'm gonna use this as it is, so I'm gonna go ahead and untangle this. Maybe I'm gonna try another one of my rainbow, double rainbows. It's a double rainbow all the way. All right, now, the longer you take to do this, guess what's happening to your clay? If you said it dries out, seven points for you. Puts you in the lead. I'm gonna start joining these together only on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna see if the clay is soft enough, I can just do this. Smooth from one side of a line to the other side of a line. And, I'm purposefully not adding a bunch of slip or water unless I really need it because once you have it too slippery and you try to pull across, you're not moving the clay. And so I just want to have pulling across happen. So I'm going to keep doing this, keep pulling it downward and sideward and forward and I don't know if sideward is a word, word word. And let me see what happens when I do this one. Now, I had a little problem here on this one because the circle was not touching. And here's the thing, I can make it come together, but I run the risk on the outside of it looking a little bit weird. So sometimes shortcuts don't work out that well. So we're gonna find out on this one if it works out or not. But the problem is I'm not gonna know for a while. All right, and I keep pulling the clay. Now, if your clay has dried out too much and this isn't working, you may have to add some water to it, um, but it's not gonna move anywhere if your hands are too wet. And so maybe I'll kind of dry off my hands a little bit um, on other parts of the clay that are really dry until my hands are a little bit less slippery. And now I'm able to pull it down again. And so this is where the bowl is really coming in handy because it's really keeping a, a wall behind things so it's not going anywhere. And it just keeps smoothing out, smoothing out, smoothing out. If you really have some big gaps there that are not closing up, you can bring in a little bit of clay. So I'm going to take this clay, which has gotten pretty dry, add a little bit of fresh water to it. Now it's smooth and easy to work with. And Right where I feel like I need to pack in a little bit more, I'm going to bring a little bit of water there too, just so that I'm getting good contact. And there it is, looking good. And then I'm going to rub that in so it goes away. So that is a little thing you can do if you feel like you're not able to close it up. Okay. So now I got to this point, and so I really want to finish off the bowl, and so now I could run a coil across everything. I could use parts, like I was using the cross section of this coil, which has gotten really dry in the process. I'm adding a little fresh water to it. I'm not really changing the shape of it. I'm just adding the water to the outside so that it's a little softer. And I'm going to cut some pieces. They're going to be as thick as my coils are, but they're going to be little circles. Space, like I'm gonna put one right here and I'm gonna put them all over so I'm I decided for the design of mine that I want to have this be an important part of the design 
that uh, keeps going around. It's like a little divider in between them. There we go. So now I have those in there. Check to see if I like it. I don't love how these are really close together and these are farther apart. I guess I need one more there. That's probably what's making it look weird for me. That one's really smushed, so I'm going to roll it into more of a circle before I put it on. All right, so that looks good. Now, if you want, you can add a touch of wetness if you need to. I'm going to rub that in, and so I'm going to just add a touch of water because I feel like it's gotten really dry, just that one. Just a little bit of water. Okay, now I want to put one coil that goes around everything. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do that with this, so it looks like I'm going to need to refresh. All right, so now I have this pretty sweet visible coil bowl. And I really like the look of it on the outside. The inside is joined together. So for one, it makes it so I could actually use it. When I later on get some glaze on this, I'll be able to have some cereal or some soup or some soup on some cereal. Grooves are kind of well done, but there are some areas that I can see they need a little bit of help. So I'm going to do a little bit of reworking of it. So I'm going to take my skewer here and I'm just going to lightly, I'm, I'm like barely, barely drawing into it. I'm just going to try to neaten up any of the lines where I want the line to be. And if I have any spots where the cracking is really bad, I can rub that away. Um, I could also add a little bit of slip or a little bit of water. Um, but the bottom spiral is good now, and so now I'm going to do it just all over the place. I'm going to look for areas that I feel like I want a little touch up. Um, and if you feel like you're doing more damage than you are fixing it, then don't do it. Or wait till it's a little bit drier. Um, it's really easy when it's soft to mess it up. Like right here, I was supposed to have a, like a circle, or in this case, got smushed being like a kind of a bean shape. So I'm going to draw it in. But it's going to look bad if it's different than the other one. So if I do that, but then I'm going to need to rub that out and probably go into it again. And then rub that out and probably go into it again. And so now it, it looks like it's supposed to be. And so draw lightly. Don't overdo it. Just anywhere that you want to see that line look really good. And then work your way around it. Now your clay is really flexible. So if I'm holding it, I'm always going to be experiencing gravity. So be aware that you're, you could stretch out your piece a lot if you're hanging on to it. So again, if it's too soft, you might want to wait. If you have some larger cracks in there, like I have this piece right there, um, I might add just a tiny touch of slip, push it in there, rub it away, and then I'm going to draw that line in there again. So right now, while I got a little slip on the finger, I'm going to go along and just look for any of those spots that I really don't like how cracked it is. And then I need to go and redraw those in because that design is really cool and I don't want to lose it. So there's that. I could also try out just plain water, just a little bit on my finger. Uh, don't cover your whole piece with water. Talk about getting soft and letting it all fall apart on you. That will do it. Um, but a little bit of water on there or a little bit of slip on there and then I can rub it in. And then once I've done that, anywhere that I've actually smooshed the line, I'm going to lightly draw it in there. 
you don't want to make it look like you drew it in there. You want to make it look like it was there all along. And so just be aware of how you're putting that line in that it matches everything else. It might require going over it many times lightly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And don't just quit on it. Like, keep looking it all over. Um, if you're tired of holding it, you can always lay it down, upside down. Then I don't have to worry about stretching it out. It also gives your hand a break. So if I have my hole like this, I'm able to then work on it little by little. Now this bowl is not your run-of-the-mill boring bowl and I really want to show off the design but you really don't see it very much when it's down so I'm deciding I'm gonna add some sort of a decorative footing with this and so I could use coils if I want to I'm gonna go ahead and make a little coil and I'm gonna make uh, three of them and I'm going to try now if I like that then great I'll go ahead and stick them on if I don't like it then do something different um, I could say I wanted something maybe I want to use the spiral if you really are into the spirals Try it like this and see if I like it where it's longer like that, so it's like that. Or I could have it be like all the way down. Um, all right, which one should I do, guys? Go ahead and tell me which one you want. Which one should I do? I can't hear you. A little louder. Oh my gosh, I'm in a room by myself. This is embarrassing. Slip. <laughs> It's lonely around here, guys. If I want more strength right there, mini coils. Work a little mini coil in there. Extra strength. So I'm going to do that because I don't want to be weak right there. I'm going to put a bunch of slip on the inside edge of it. It's going to be very hard to do it on the other side, so I'm going to do it here. Lay this on, wrap it around, and then it comes over and it runs into that quill right there. So I like that. And if I don't like it, it's coming off. All right, looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and do two more. So now I have this fancy bowl. You just thought you were making a bowl. You're making a fancy bowl. Very cool. I like how it looks. Now, if 
you make feet on a piece and the weight of the piece is smushing the feet. See what's going on here? Go ahead and flip it over and let it dry upside down. You don't want to ruin the feet. Just And then once it's all right where I want it, let it dry. Once it's leather hard, where it's really holding its form, I can do some slight adjustments if I feel like I need to get the balance a little bit right. Um, but right now it's really soft, so I'm going to let it dry like this. So make sure you get your initials on it while it's soft, somewhere where it's clear enough to see. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle. Okay. I think it's time to go. So I hope you enjoyed your experience of making a visible coil-built vessel, in this case a bowl. If you ever want to, wear it as a hat. People will think you're really smart. All right. See you later, everybody.